Good evening, all. Be turning to Acts chapter 1. While you're turning there, you know the, the ladies have their ladies' lunch in here at the end of April, on March, whenever it is. What month is this? March. Feels like April. And uh, I've never gone, well, I, I have gone to one. There was like a big snowstorm and nobody showed up, so I went to eat the food. I didn't care about anything else but the food, and because they, they, the ladies have good food. But I'm usually around. But this time, I decided I'm going to get me a ticket and go. And you say, well, you're not a lady. I happened to see this ticket, and it said, ice cream Sunday buffet. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> so I got me a ticket. You saying, you bought a ticket? No, I found it. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. We're going to start reading verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, then asked him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore, a, uh, <clears throat> restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father has put in his own power. For ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon ye. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So here you are in Acts. You have Jesus' ascension up into heaven. He's basically, he's sitting here and he's given his, his, uh, his apostles their, their marching orders. Listen, here's what we're going to do. Now, they're still a little bit confused. They're waiting for him to come down, set up his kingdom, take over, and Israel be the, the nation they, they want it to be. They, they didn't realize there was a, a time in here that God needed for them to go to work. And the work wasn't as we are in charge, the work as there's a Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. So He said, don't, don't worry about that. That time will come, but it's not for you to know. Right now, all I do, wait for the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you'll understand. And then they will head out and do their work. Now, what I want to do is I want to skip forward to chapter 8. Skip forward to chapter 8, because here they are. They're starting, and this is the early church. This is them starting the early church, but realizing <clears throat> that starting churches, the, the job, the task they had at hand was not going to be easy, to say the least. And that's what I want to look at tonight. When we are a people on the move, what God can do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you again for loving us. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we may look at it. And Lord, we can draw our strength. We can draw our, our wisdom, our knowledge. We can draw it all from your word. So Lord, just use me tonight, your servant, to deliver your message in Jesus' name. So here he is in chapter 8 now. Like I said, we've moved forward. And in eight, chapter 8, chapter 8, Acts, eight, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 1, it's all going to... Woosa, woosa. Anyway, <clears throat> it says, And Saul, consenting unto his death, and at the time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Judea and Samaria, except apostles. <clears throat> and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. For Saul had made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committing them to prison. Therefore, they were scattered abroad, went everywhere, preaching the, the word. So here he is. They're out starting the church now. They're doing all these things and, 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 and going out, and they're going into these areas, and they're preaching Jesus Christ, and they're getting things established because this is the time, this is the time they, didn't, they didn't understand this while Christ was here, the church age. They didn't understand there was going to be churches established, and then the churches were going to bring people to Jesus Christ and, and grow his kingdom. That's how God accepted. It was never meant just for Israel. Israel was always meant to be just a servant. 
to go out and deliver his message, his people to deliver his message so that everybody in the world would come to Jesus Christ. That's the whole process. That's where they didn't understand that. So now, now as they're getting ready, they're starting the churches and they're getting things going. And you know, I, I could sit here and, and the whole time, I had already had this message written, but down there I was watching everything play out. And watching Victorio go and start churches here, go and start there. Watching this person start a church here and over there. And he was taking us around all these churches been starting. And let me tell you, there's not easy. It wasn't just go up in the mountains and go into these communities and say, hey, let me share Jesus Christ to you. It wasn't that easy. I mean, there's still areas that they, they will not let them in. I mean, there's still people out there. Satan is out there. He does not want to see more churches started. He does not want to see Jesus Christ being scattered, being spread all over. He doesn't want to see that. So there's opposition. So here they had, they had Saul. And, and he just got done killing Stephen. And, and he's out there and it says he's wreaking havoc. He's trying to stop it. That's what Satan's going to do. Church, believe me, when, when we, we got missionaries going out to start churches, Satan's going to try everything he can to stop them. And, you know, it's, it's not always just, hey, let's kill them all, but there's a lot of opposition. And, and this is what they're going against. But when they don't stop, when they don't let Satan stop them, when they keep going and doing what you're supposed to do, look what happens. Look at the people that were saved. Because those apostles stood up and said, we will not preach any other gospel, we will not be stopped the least Summit Baptist Temple is today. And because the least Summit Baptist Temple has not let anything stop them, we've been able to start other churches. We've been able to send people out. We've been able to support these people while they're out starting churches. But knowing it's, it's not easy. Again, Satan is working hard. The first thing he always tries to do is get that seed of doubt in you. Am I, you know, am I the right guy? And, or, you know what, is, is this going to be all right? I mean, believe me, when we were out and about, I was wondering if, if we were doing the right thing, especially you know, some of the places he took us to eat. I was worried. <laughs> if the mountain didn't get me, Montezuma's was. Or scorpions, that's another story. But, again, it was, there's just opposition, and it makes you think, am, am I the right person for this? I mean, believe me, when I got, when I was, deciding to leave Hallmark and, and go to work for the church, the biggest opposition I had was this guy right here that says, I can't do it. You got the wrong guy. And who's that putting that thought in my mind? It's Satan. Because Jesus never said, Darren, you got everything I need. Man, That you are, you are perfect. He just said, are you willing? If you're willing, I'll give you what you need. Church, if you're willing to do my work, I will give you everything you need because I've already, I've, I've, I've defeated the enemy. He's going to try to make you think I haven't, but I already have. Don't listen to him. Just go out there, do the work. But Lord, we need, we're going to need food. We're going to need money. I got you taken care of. Don't worry about it. But Lord, there's people out there that don't want to hear this. Tell those that do. Amen. Then you just tell those that do. If somebody doesn't want to listen... Move on to the next person. I mean, there was a couple of times he said, you know what, just shake the dust off your feet and move on. Right. Because there's people that want to hear. How many times have you heard stories about somebody saying, you know what, they went up there and they're, and they're witnessing to them and they're like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. There's people out there and they need to hear. But understand, when you understand right up off the way that there's going to be opposition, then you just, all right, they're coming. Lord, I know there's going to be opposition. I'm going to give it to you. I'll, you take care of it. I'll just go and do your work. Because we have to be a people on the move. We cannot stop. We got to keep going. We got to keep moving. Because this world needs to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen. And because when we do, the greatest joy they'll ever get is when they receive Christ. Amen. The greatest joy I've ever gotten as an individual in this world is when I receive Jesus Christ. And in verse, uh, in verse 5 of chapter 8, 
as we continue reading, it says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voices, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were taken with palsy, and they that were, and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. You have all these things. I mean, they had people that were, you know, possessed with evil spirits. You had those that were lame. You had those with palsy. They couldn't, you know, they had all these things going on. And it didn't say that they went in there and they healed everybody. Now, they did some healing. Now, they cast out some evil spirits. But what brought them great joy was the fact that they took them Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it's, it's when you take Christ to somebody who... You know it has no joy in their life. And you sit there and you pray with them. And when they look up at you, you see joy in their face. Their life, for the most part, has not changed. The only thing that changes is they, they now know where they're going. Because they got Christ. Believe me, if going out and sharing Jesus was the easy was easy. Every Christian in the world would be doing it. It's not. And it's not for the weak. But it's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share Christ. If we're going to build churches here, Guadalajara, up in the mountains, wherever, then somebody has to go, no matter what. Well, you know what? There, it's dangerous there. Okay, you know, I, you know, I don't want to give too much for Wednesday, but it keeps popping into my head. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's dangerous up there. I mean, like I said, it's, you could drive off the mountain or, but you know what, there's areas they still can't get into because they won't let them in. They got witch doctors up there that don't want to see people come in. Victoria knows two people that were killed up there, not in the area we were at but in those areas, because they don't want to hear it. You think there's still not persecution? Look around. It's happening. It's not easy, but people, if we don't go, they will not hear Jesus Christ. Right. They will not come to him. We have to keep going. Drop down to verse 39. It says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went away rejoicing. Now, this was the Ethiopian eunuch. And this was after Philip, Philip went down to his, his, uh, his cart and, said, and shared it with him. You know, hey, do you realize what, you know what you're reading? Do you understand it? How can I accept somebody? Tell me. So he did. He shared Jesus Christ with him. He got, baptized, he got saved and then he baptized him. But he went away joyfully. Why? Because he now understood. You can sit here and you can read the Bible and you can be a great scholar and you can read the Bible and read the Bible and not have any idea what God's talking about until you get the Holy Spirit. All you know is, man, they, they, to be a good person, i got to do all these things, and I can't do those things. I can't keep the law. I, I mean, it even tells me that if I think bad things that I've, I've sinned, you know, if I say that I hate somebody in my heart, that I've basically committed murder, I can't do it. And what that does, when you, when you just know you can't do something, it just brings defeat. And there's so many people walking, away, walking around today just defeated. And then all of a sudden, somebody shares Jesus Christ with you. And he tells you, you know what? You never could do it. But Jesus Christ did do it. Now all you have to do is just trust in him. Amen. Call upon his name. And then all of a sudden, that burden's lifted. That burden of, I cannot do it, is gone. Still can't do it, but you don't carry that burden anymore. Because now I know what true joy is. True joy is knowing I have a Lord that takes care of me. I have a Lord that fights for me. I have a Lord that's going to provide for me. I have a Lord who's paved a way for me. And all I have to do is just trust Him. It's like having a job and knowing that I got somebody else who's going to do it for me. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Darren, we're going to pay you, but he's going to do all the work. 
I like that. <laughs> God said, listen, I've taken care of all of it, but here's what I need you to do. I still need you to do the work, but you got the easy part. I'm the one that died and went to hell. You got the easy part. All you got to do is just tell people what I did for you. That's it. Yeah, there's going to be opposition. You know what? Might even die. But don't worry about it because I got a place for you in heaven. I've got it all taken care of. Just go because if you don't go, they're not going to hear. Quite frankly, if you don't go, I have no reason to keep you here. Go. I told you a time that I had a friend ask me one time after he got saved. He was sick and he just flat out asked me, is God going to heal me now? I said, that's up to you. Because I said, and I told my buddy, you know what? If you're not going to serve him, you're better off in heaven. He has no reason to keep you here suffering. Are you going to serve him? If you are, then you know what? I believe he'll heal you. But if you're not, he might as well take you to heaven. My friend's in heaven right now. He's better off than he was. But for those who are still here, we have to go. Because again, if this world's going to find true joy, not temporary joy, not joy for a couple of hours, or even joy for a week, true joy, they need Jesus Christ. Listen, we got up there in the mountains, and they don't have, I mean, you look at that world, and it was truly like going back 150 years. I mean, no electricity, no running water. But I remember the first night we were coming in, it was dark. He said, now you see way over there across the, the ravine, that's, that's, see those lights? That's where we're headed to. And he starts honking his horn. And he says, listen. And you hear them crying out for joy. Because the man that brought him Jesus is on his way back again. Like I said, they don't got anything. They're, they, they're, not, they're not down there watching TV. They don't have internet. Matter of fact, we didn't have cell service for three days. <laughs> you know what? It was kind of nice. Other than the fact that I couldn't be in contact with my wife and she thought I was dead somewhere. <laughs> we could have died there and nobody would have ever known. <laughs> Except for God. I'm okay. <laughs> Good luck. But, but no, I mean, but they were just happy to see us. Why? They had Christ in their heart. We want to take joy to this world. We have to take them Jesus Christ. And it's too important to let anything stop us. Anything. We got to keep going. Why? we got to take them Jesus Christ. Listen, they're not going to come track out Jesus Christ on their own. They're not. Now, I, I, I can almost guarantee you, almost, that everybody that walks in the door because they said they looked us up on the Internet is already a Christian. The lost is not out there looking, I'm going to go to church. They're looking for happiness and all these things and everything but Jesus Christ. So we have to bring them Jesus Christ. As we read on there in verse 9 of chapter 8, it says, But there was a certain man called Simeon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed uh, from the least to the greatest, saying, this, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that all, all the time... Uh, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip's preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. And, and, and Simon uh, himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Here he had this man named Simon. He's, he's out there bewitching the people. You know, he's claiming to be the great one. So he's got people following him. And these people that are following him, they're not, they're not coming to Christ. They're not finding joy. They're not finding happy. They're not getting salvation. But he's getting something. People are looking at him. 
I mean, how many of these people in the world we got out here that we've made our idols because of, well, they're a movie star or they're an athlete or whatever they are? No. There's only one, Jesus Christ. And those that are taking Christ, you know what, Philip and them, they, they weren't looking for recognition. No, they didn't. Matter of fact, if anybody stopped and worshipped them because of something they did, they're like, whoa, don't, don't worship me. I'm, I'm just a man like you are. Don't look at me. It's Jesus Christ. Somebody has to bring them to Christ. And, you know, I was watching things, and it was, it was uh, you know, Sunday in, in Victoria's church. Like I said, Jerry said, you know, he, Pastor Jerry said we, he had a new baptismal, so they were getting to break it in, and it was, it was fantastic. But I was watching things and, and looking how everything ties. And Jerry was, he's given the sermon here talking about Naaman when he was cured of the leprosy, and, and he, he went after, the, it was the servants who brought Naaman to cleanness. And I was watching how things work down there. And we don't think, we do it here. Okay, but I'm, I'm more focused. See, when you're on a missions trip like this, you're in tune, man. There's nothing. Because remember, I've lost cell, con, you know, cell phone contact, so i got nothing to distract me anymore. So you're in tune. You're watching. But I'm thinking about it. Here it is. You know, they go out on Saturday. They knock on doors. They, they invite people. And some of those that got baptized got saved Saturday, and then they bring them in. So you got the servant. Because remember, it was the servant that said, Naaman, there's a, there's a prophet in, in uh, Samaria, you need to go see him. He can heal you. So what do they do? They go out, they knock on doors. Hey, we have a Savior. So they, they talk to him. They share Christ with him. Sunday, they sent out the van. And the van goes and gets him. And they bring him in. And who was that? Who was it in van? It wasn't Christ. It was a servant. The servant loads him up, brings him in. And... Then what happens is it wasn't Christ that got up and spoke for say. It was a pastor who gets up, a servant, and shares Christ with them. And then he says, this is how you be saved. And they, that servant gets down and prays with them. And what does that person do? And who opens the door? Jesus Christ does. Because somebody went out there and brought them to Christ. It was, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes watching it. Yes, again, we do it here. But it was just like, and I, because and I, that was the message that, that Pastor Jerry preached. And listen, and then seeing, man, when, when you do it, when the servant just does what we're supposed to do, what happens? We bring them to Jesus Christ, we bring them to the one who brings salvation, we bring them to the one that gives joy, hope. Peace, all those things. I mean, look at the fruits of the Spirit. When you got saved and you got the Holy Spirit, you got all those things in there. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You got it all. We got it all. But somebody had to go out and bring us in to Christ. When I got saved, I wasn't driving around looking for him. Where in the world is just Jesus Christ at? Man, maybe I would go to this church or that. No, I wasn't looking around, but somebody came out and said, Hey, Darren, I need to tell you something. And they shared Christ with me. And then you know what they did? They took me to church. <laughs> they didn't just share with me. They took me. But, I mean, that's, that's what happens. When you see these things, then you see churches being built. You've seen people's lives being built. Because somebody just simply shared Jesus Christ with them. Because they didn't let anything else stop them. They didn't let doubt or fear stop them. Well, you know what? What if he has a question that I can't answer? Well, what if he does? The one question that you can answer is how you get to heaven. And if you can answer that, bring him to church and then we'll start teaching them. That's all you got to do. And then, as long as you know how to get here, go down Chipman, take a ride down at the bottom of the hill, you can get them to church. But you have to, somebody has to go. And when people go, that's what happens. Like I said, and, and, and Pastor Jerry said, man, he's got, he's got good workers. We got good workers. But we can't let anything stop us. We have to keep going. 
And, and, and when we do that, you can sit back there and see. I hope every time we baptize somebody, you're excited. Because we just added to the body. We just did what we were supposed to do. We just pleased the Lord. Pastor Jerry talked about it this morning, and, they, and, and the Lord was pleased. How do we please the Lord when we just follow instructions? I mean, the man that he, that, that's pastoring out in those villages, let me tell you, he isn't living the high life. He isn't, he doesn't have everything, I mean, he doesn't have running water. He's got to pump water from the river up to his house. But I never saw him depressed or down at one point. Matter of fact, when he was swerving through these mountain roads, he was singing God, he was singing hymns. <laughs> and I wished he would quit and just start driving. <laughs> and put his glasses on. <laughs> no. He was because he wasn't caught up in that. All he knew was these people needed Jesus Christ. And he was one of the happiest guys I ever met out there. It wasn't because of anything this world has to offer. I mean, the things of this world, they just bring troubles. You get a car, it's trouble. You got a house, trust me, it's trouble. <laughs> Whatever it is. The things of this world break. Well, they say, you know, where moth and rust doth corrupt. The things of this world will go away, but the things of Christ, that's the joy that they find. And here they are, they're out there preaching through all this. And yes, you know what, there's opposition. Yes, there's, there's those that don't want to see Jesus Christ shared. But they didn't stop. And what happened? Again, we have a church today because of that. Because they didn't let opposition defeat them. They didn't let somebody say, you can't do that. Believe me, there's people out there saying, you can't do that. You know what, there's groups out there... <clears throat> They would say, you know what, you, going up into the mountains and sharing Jesus Christ with these indigenous natives, that's just wrong. You need to let them believe what they want to believe. Trust me, that's what they say. And you know who's saying that? Not people that live up in the mountains. People that live in some cozy house. It's not the indigenous up there that are complaining. It's other people. Because they need something. They know it. And then all of a sudden, some crazy guy drives his truck up this mountain that only donkeys travel. Literally. Only donkeys travel. And he says, hey, you know what? I got something for you. I got a savior for you. And he starts sharing Christ. And you know what? They got to do a little backtracking. It's not just going up there and say, hey, you know who Jesus Christ is because they give you that look of who? He's got to teach him. And then he goes back down that mountain. And he's got to go back up there again. And say, all right, let's teach him a little bit more. We'll give him a little bit more and a little bit more. And up and down that mountain. Until they say, I want Jesus Christ. And that's what goes on. Why? Because somebody went. Because somebody was willing not to let anything stop them. I mean, it, trust me, that wasn't an easy task for him. I, I don't envy him. But I'm glad that there's people out there that will do that. Matter of fact, I mean, Pastor Jerry said this morning, he threatened us that if we didn't do a couple of things, then he was going to send us up in the mountains. I'd have gave his dog a bath if that was the case. Because <laughs> no, but it's just we just got to go. And when we go, what happens? People come to Christ. I said, they're, they're not up in the mountains coming down to the bottom of the hill where his church is. And, and they do come down the bottom of the hill where his church is. And they walk by and he gives them food and water. Hey, let me give if you can, he gives them a ride. But you know what he does? He gives them Christ. Because that's truly what they need. But they're not coming down there knocking on his door and saying, hey, 
I hear this is where Jesus Christ is. No, they're saying, hey, we heard that there's food and water here. Yes, there is, but I have much more for you. Church, that's how we got to be. We go out there, we tell people, and we bring them in here because this is where Christ is. And we got to take them to Christ. So we got to bring them in. In Acts 9.20 it says, And straightway he preached Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Again, that's all we're doing. We're just letting people know who Jesus Christ is. But the next thing we got to do, <clears throat> in Acts 8, verse 14, it says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, uh, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as, uh, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Then laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. He said, now that, when they started to hear what was going on there in Samaria, what did they do? They prayed for them. You know, we got missions night coming up. And I, I love our Wednesday nights, but I love missions night. I love getting to hear what's going on. I love that we have the opportunity to pray for our missionaries. And I truly hope that's what we do. I hope we pray for them. Because, again, Pastor Jerry made mention of this. That's what they covet. Why? Because prayer is one of the strongest tools we have. It's, it's, it's that lifting them up to God and letting God take care of them. You know, I, 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 I know there was people back here praying for us, and, and I truly, truly appreciate that. I believe that's how we were able to do what we did. I, I honestly believe that's why me or Pastor Jerry didn't get sick. Because we ate some sketchy things. <laughs> we slept with sketchy critters. But you guys were praying for us. And I truly believe that God listened, and I know that he took care of us. Now, believe you, me and Pastor Jerry were praying just as hard. But, you know, I have no doubt that he was praying for you as well. Because there's still work here to do. Yes, you know what? We went down there because Victoria wanted us to see the work he's doing. He says, you've been invested in me for five years in here, and you need to see what I'm doing. You need to know your money is not just going to waste. Now, truly, we weren't nervous that it was, but he wanted us to see it. But there's still work here. Not all of us are going to go to Guadalajara. Not all of us are going to want to go on that mission trip. <laughs> but we can be praying for Victoria. We can be praying for a Cody, for a David, and all of our missionaries. They need our prayers. Because when they're in the midst of things, when they're driving up in that mountain and he's making those switchbacks and he's and, and it's just looking out for boulders and, and everything else and goats and donkeys and cows and yes, you gotta look out for all those things. He ain't got time to pray. He's keeping it on the road, I hope. It's our prayers. Lord, keep him safe. Because he's the only one that's going up in there. He's the only one that's taking them to Jesus Christ. You, we need to keep him safe. Because if he creams off the side of the mountain, who's going to go next? One of us? I can't speak Spanish or the indigenous language. Victoria has to raise up another one. And that takes time. He's got another area he wants to put a pastor in. So that they can take another area of the mountains. That takes time. That pastor needs us praying for him. When they, what, when they prayed, what happened? People received Christ. They received the Holy Ghost. They got that happiness. Why? Because people were praying. Again, what's the greatest tool we have as Christians? Prayer. Because you know what? I can sit there and I can call Victorio and I can comfort him. I can say, do this, do that. But only God can 
keep that life going. Amen. Only God can take somebody up and down the mountain and bring him back every time. That's God. We need to take them. Prayers. Church, we need to be praying. We need to be lifting people up to God. I mean, you look at our prayer requests. Are people sick? Are we praying for them? We have our fearless leader. Are we praying for him? He needs wisdom. He needs guidance. And I don't say that out of disrespect. He needs wisdom and guidance. Are we praying for him? You pray for your Sunday school teacher. I hope my class prays for me. I need prayer. Believe me. I need prayer too. Because I know that it's only God who can do these things. Listen, I can't grow a Sunday school class. But if I'm doing what God says to do, then he can. Church, we can't grow this church. But if we're doing what God says, we can't, says, or God tells us to do, he will. Because he told us. So we need to be praying for each other that nothing stops us. Praying for Victorio that nothing stops him. And I can't even imagine what it would take to stop Victorio. Like I said, what would it take to, to stop, and I can't remember the pastor's name for the life of me, uh, is Hiro. Hiro. Because it's not lack of, because he's doing that right now. With lack of. Matter of fact, they, they installed their new industrial kitchen. And, and Pastor Jerry wants to do it here. And Catherine said he was going to have to start doing all the cooking. Because it was just, everything's wood-fired down there. We have wood-fired grills here. Everything's wood-fired down there because that's all they got. Wood and fire. <laughs> but prayers. That's what God tells them. You know, that's, that's what happened here when they were starting these churches. Romans 15.30 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, that for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. How do we strive together? In prayers. The love of the Spirit, that we do these things, that we're praying for each other, we're there to help each other. Yes, you know what? We need to give support. Yes, you know what? Victorio needs our prayers. But he also needs our support. He needs somebody to send finances. They got to have a vehicle. Believe if they didn't have a vehicle and they had to walk up to the mountain, he's not going to do 10 meetings a week. Because it, I mean, in the car, it took hour, you know, it took an hour to get from one village to the other. So you imagine walking. It's going to take several hours and then have to get back they need vehicles matter of fact the, the, the truck he was driving we helped, we helped provide for it. not Victorio but the other pastor Iro. and we yes we gave Victorio a truck too and you know what he does with that he loads up scripture in that and he takes off that's his pride and joy that truck because of the work he can do in it I was just happy he didn't make us right in it because me and Pastor Jerry would have had to jump in the back seats, which are not really back seats. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but again, it's, yes, they need our prayers. They need our support. They need us to be in it with them. You know what? They weren't all there in Samaria, all the apostles. Now some more joined them, but they were praying for them. And then they got there and they started laying hands on people and seeing people saved and baptizing people. Like I said, it, it, was, it was such a, a wonderful thing. And I, like I said, you know, we do it here, but when you're out there, you're just, that's all, you're just in the Spirit. That's what I love about missions trips because everything is about that trip. You're not, there's nothing else going on. You know what? I had no other worries in showing up and, 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 and just seeing what God was doing. And you're, you're at the total reliance on God. Lord, you've got to take care of this. Again, I can't speak the language. I can't do any of this. I need you to take care of me. So you're at his total reliance. So you're just listening. You're in tune. And I'm sitting there watching what's going on. And I'm just seeing what happens when a church does what God says to do. 
when somebody goes out into an area and knocks on doors that may not necessarily wanted to hear it. But then when they did hear it, there was some that got saved. And then somebody jumped in that van. And I'm not saying this was a luxury van. This is, I mean, they're still running vans that we've sent down there years ago. <laughs> and those roads, let me tell you, they're not the greatest. But they're going out there and they're telling people about Christ. And they're bringing them in and they're being baptized. And they're coming up out of that water. And man, you just see the joy on their face. Why? Because people went. Why did Naaman get recovered from leprosy? Because somebody said, this is how. Elijah didn't go to him and say, come with me, I can fix you. A simple servant said, there's a man that can fix you. You know what our message is, folks? There's a Lord that can fix you. Amen. He can give you eternal life. He can give you salvation. Can I take you to him? Can I share him with you? And then when they, you share them with him and they pray and they knock on that door. Because the first time what happened when Naaman knocked on Elijah's door, Elijah didn't answer. It was a servant. Like I said, you know what? Victoria wasn't out running the routes. It was servants. Well, where is your pastor? He's getting ready. No, he's, he's there. Jesus Christ wasn't sitting in the driver's seat himself. But then they brought him in. And then that last time they knocked on the door, when Naaman knocked, who opened? It was Elijah. When they knock on that door and Jesus Christ opens, the joy you see on their face. Why? Because somebody went. Somebody didn't let anything stop them. Somebody didn't look and say, you got to be kidding me. That You want me to go there? You want me to do this? You want me to tell these people what? No, they said, Lord, I'll do what you tell me to do. And then people come to Christ. Again, you know what I, every time I take a trip, I don't care how many trips I go on, I always look and see what God's going to teach me. Lord, what are you going to teach me this time? And you know what? Sometimes it's not anything new and, and some great revelation. Sometimes it's just, Darren, just be still for a moment. Watch me work. Watch when somebody does what I tell them to do. Watch me work. In Sunday school, we're going through Habakkuk. Habakkuk starts out the book is, Lord, why are you blessing these pagan nations and not us? They're getting ready to go into captivity, all these things. Why are you blessing them? They got more things than we do. Now they're going to come in and they're going to take everything we have. Why, Lord? We're your people. And you know what he says? Habakkuk, be quiet. I'm working. Watch me work. Watch me bring salvation to my people. You want to see the Lord bring salvation to this world? Then we need to go and watch him work. Close your eyes with me.